Now the next parent function that we'll be dealing with in this course is the square root of x. And this is a unique function that we have probably not seen too much of. So y is equal to the square root of x. That's the same thing as f of x equals square root of x. Now, before making a table of values and plotting this function, I want you to notice how the x values can't be negative. Because if we put a negative value for x, then we'll be rooting a negative number and that's undefined. So let's pick some x values for which the y values will be integers. So 0 would be 1, 1 would be another, the square root of 4 is smooth, and then let's just do 9 here. So the square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So if we take these points and plot them, 0, 0 is here, 1 and 1 is here, 4 and 2 is here, and then 9 and 3 is down there. So it looks something like this. Now an additional point that I want to make, and it's a point that causes some confusion for students, is that technically when we square root a number it could be plus or minus. So technically the square root of 1 can be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. And if we were to graph it like that, then we would have these additional points down here. So the graph would look something like that. However, since we're dealing with functions, we're calling this square root of x a function, we only deal with the positive y values because if we dealt with the negative y values instead, it wouldn't pass the vertical line test and it wouldn't be a function. So whenever you see y is equal to square root of x, then only deal with positive y values. However, if this was rewritten as y squared is equal to x, like we did an example before, then you deal with positive and negative y values. Okay, so basically the thing to remember is if you're given a quote unquote function and it's in this form square root of x, you're only dealing with the positive y values. Don't put any negative y values for uh, the dependent variable. However, if this was instead rewritten as y squared equals x, which is the same thing, then we would deal with positive and negative y values and this would just be a relation, it wouldn't be a function. So let's finish off this video with giving the domain and range of the function square root of x and I'm going to just erase this uh, negative portion that I drew here. So since we're dealing with the square root function, we're only dealing with the positive y values. So what's the domain of this? What values can x take? Well, x can be anything as long as it's greater than or equal to zero. So we have a restriction on the domain this time. So x is an element of real numbers. However, x has to be greater than or equal to zero. And then if you notice for the range, the y values, same thing they can be zero or greater than zero. So same thing, y can be any number as long as it's greater than or equal to zero. So that's the domain and range of our square root function.